Herborian, Herborian. Hmm, la blague, la blague. Hey, hey, hello, bonjour. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cyril. I used to be a stem cell researcher for quite some time, and this is why I can tell you about the science behind skincare in Guinea. And today's video is going to be about Herborian, uh, which is a French Korean brand. So they are sold in France and they are very popular right now. They are also sold in South Korea, but I don't think that they are that popular in Korea, but I might be wrong. And I've also seen on the website that they are also sold in uh, the UK and different uh, country in Europe, I also think in the United States. By the way, tell me down below if you have ever heard about this brand. Originally, when I wanted to do this video, these two reasons. Uh, the first one is because right now in France, like I've said, it's very popular and they are doing like a big uh, marketing um, campaign with the new two product based on uh, red chili pepper and I'm like, are you kidding me or what? It's so silly, but anyway, I'm going to talk about it um, today. There are also two uh, very famous YouTubers in France. One of them, she's mainly, uh, she mainly does makeup, and the other one, she's doing makeup and also a lot of uh, skincare and skincare product anyway. And when I saw all those products I sell and the marketing claims, I was like, oh no, I have to film a video for the French. And I was like, why not also doing it in English? So this is why we are here. Um, today. So this brand, they are selling skincare products and also makeup products. Just for the makeup product, they are not bad, but, and there is like a big, but that really doesn't set well with me in the shade range. I'm like, hello, we are in 2020. How come there is no shades for very fair skin and also very dark skin tone, especially if there are many distributing friends. I'm like, hello, in France, we have a huge variety of skin colors. So no, just no, we need shades for dark skin tone. And I think this is important that every one of us that is in the beauty community, the beauty industry, whatever the name, that we all denounce and say that those brands has to stop. So apparently they are working on more shades, but I mean, to me, I just don't get how they can make products, especially now that they are a big brand, how they can still think that it is okay to come up with a new product without shades for darker skin tone or very few skin tone. I mean, to me, it's just simply no. Uh, if you look now at the skincare, the way that they are selling all the skincare line is basically based on food. Yeah, never heard me about food. So it relies on this idea that if you are eating something that is healthy, like Glow Recipe, hello, I know again, <laughs> I'm talking about them, but like, if banana is good, we are going to make a banana cream. If this ingredient is good, uh, it is going also to be good for the skin. And I'm like, since when our skin is similar to our gut? Just tell me, tell me. <laughs> our gut, like our digestive tracts, is made to digest food, not our skin. So it's completely different. So just starting from this, it makes absolutely no sense. So they have uh, a line that is based on yuzu, which is a sort of lemon that is very popular in Korea, that is delicious, absolutely divine, by the way. So of course, they have created a line around it. I'm like, what the hell? They, all, they also have a line about uh, sesame oil. So this one is less um, finicky, let's put it like this. And now they have come up with the red paper paste. And I'm like, red pepper pulp. This is how they call it. They have two products. They have one that is a gel cream and the other one that is a mask. And oh my God, no, just no. So if you don't know uh, the Korean, um, the, the base of Korean cuisine is uh, made with sesame oil, also soy sauce. So maybe they are going to come with uh, a soy sauce based skincare. I'm like, and by the way, the soy sauce in Korea, the taste of it is very different from the other Asian uh, country. It is also divine. And they also use, and they also use red chili uh, paste that is named Koku Jang, that is also very delicious. It's not too, too strong. Uh, if you just take this ingredient, there are several articles actually online that show that they are very uh, uh, inflammatory. And there are many reports actually of people that have a very strong allergic reaction to it with inflamed lips, inflamed also uh, fingers. When you are cooking with chili peppers, you need to be very careful, especially if you are sensitive uh, to them. And one of the reasons is because there is one component which is named capsaicin. Capsaicin? Yeah, capsaicin. Uh, and this molecule can bind to our receptors into our nerves. 
and uh, creates inflammatory response and etc and also a burning um, sensation so of course because herborian they are not silly they didn't include this component from the extract of chili peppers now if you look at how they brand uh, those two products so for example for the red pepper they're, they're telling you that it is going to energize your skin i'm like what does it mean what does energizing your skin means does it mean that your skin will have more energy so in that case did they see an increase of the ATP, which is the adenosine triphosphate. This molecule that is found in every single uh, cells in us, in cucumber, in your cat, in your dog, in fish, and etc. I mean, every single cell, even the bacteria, they are using uh, ATP to store energy. Basically, so did they show this? I'm pretty sure that they did not. But I mean, uh, what I mean by that is that uh, this promising is like really empty. They are just chosen this specific article because it is trendy. Because it is trendy to show that uh, some um, healthy food in a way is also healthy for the skin despite the fact that there is no science. And I went online to see if there is like any articles on uh, extract from um, red chili papers. And guess what? There is none. I was not able to find one. So maybe there is one that is really hidden on the net but it really makes absolutely um, no sense and, and you can also see it in the formula so let's start with the red pepper uh, pulp so this one is a gel moisturizer that is supposed to energize uh, your skin and when i look at the formula it is not even well done actually so like i've said this is a gel uh, cream uh, use most of the time i have to say that uh, those type of gel they are more targeting for people who have more oily uh, skin type especially the one that you find in france like from the french brands or from most i would say western brands they are barely moisturizing in the sense that they don't uh, contain any emollients or oxalate this one does contain one emollient which is demithicone which i'm perfectly fine with it i have to say that for certain oily skin type this is a good one but then when you look at the formula you have butylenglycol propanidol niacinamide Decaprylyl carbonate, this one is also another ammonite, and then we have glycerin. So just by looking at it, um, it doesn't seem to be very rich into um, humectants. Unless they are using like a crazy amount of niacinamide, like around 5%, which would be perfect. I'm completely fine with niacinamide, but probably not. So just by looking at it, I'm like, hmm, maybe it does not contain um, a lot. And then after the hexanediol, so hexanediol here with the ethyl excel glycerin, they are one of the two uh, preservative system, which is fine. Most of the time, the one two hexanediol is used around two percent or below it, so meaning that the rest of the ingredient will be below or equal to two percent anyway. So they use the, uh, the extract, the capsium annuum fruit extract, which. I don't even know if it has any property. Then there are some ingredients that are not bad, actually. There are, for example, an extract from licorice that is very soothing for the skin. I mean, why not? They also have hyaluronic acid, again, uh, why not? You do have perfume, which is not optimal. You also have two extract, uh, two derivative of essential oil. So it's uh, linalool and, limo and limonel. You are seeing me uh, looking at, uh, at here because this is where I have my computer. And guess what you have? You have uh, basically pigment. So you have three different red pigment to tint basically the product because I'm pretty sure that the extract from pepper is transparent. I mean... Uh, to me, it really makes uh, no sense. There are way better alternatives in the market. Those type of products are really like fern skincare. So of course you can use one of them if you really want to, but I mean, they are way better alternative, especially this one, it retails for 45 euros for 50 ml. I mean, you have the, for example, the perfect gel from Adalabo that is amazing. Uh, this one is more targeting for normal to dry skin type. This is a gel. If you like those gel texture, you have uh, which one? You have the essence from uh, Cure that I've also talked about, the uh, wrinkle essence, for example, I've already talked uh, about it. This one is uh, really lightweight. It will be perfect for a more uh, oilier skin type, for example. I mean, now let's move on to uh, the mask. Again, the mask is so damn gimmicky. You can start to see, they have like uh, a look at the texture. It really looks like the Coco Jang paste. So basically what they have done, is they have tried to replicate the look of uh, the paste. So to me, it's really like gimmicky skincare. This is just here to basically have something that is fun. But basically that's it. It is only fun and it retails again for 37 euros for uh, 50 ml. 
Would I use it on myself? No, <laughs> absolutely no. So if you look just at, at the formula, which is also, again, it is supposedly boosting the brightening of your skin and make your skin like a little bit more energized than anything. If you want to energize your skin and have like a refined skin texture and etc., what do you do? You use a mask or an acid base mask. It is as simple as that. Do you need necessarily to use like a high concentration? No. Not necessarily, but with this, you will have like better results than this one. And I would think that it would have been way better to formulate a mask that actually contain uh, around 10% glycolic acid, maybe a little bit of a clay mask with a very moisturizing, very emollient uh, base. And with this one, you will have like a wonderful brightening um, of the skin. Obviously, they didn't do this. So if you just look at the formula, this is what puzzled me a little bit. Uh, the first ingredient is, of course, water, uh, no problem, then glycerin, then niacinamide. I'm not against niacinamide, but in a mask, it doesn't make too much sense to me, simply because to have like the full benefits of niacinamide, you need to use it every single day. So I'm like, okay. Then you have cetaryl olivate, which is here to, to make the emulsion, okay. Then hexanidol, and then squalane. Hexanidol, like I said, is between one and 2%. So the squalane is below 2%. So just starting from here, probably this mask is not going to be crazy hydrating like okay and almost immediately you have the red pigments to have this deep shade this deep red shade uh, you have an extract of oats which again is completely fine but i'm just afraid that the concentration of emollient is not super high so it's not going to be even a very hydrating mask uh, again you have perfume you have uh, the true extract of um uh, essential oils so it's linalon lemonade i'm like it's very very gimmicky with some ingredients that are not bad but the way that those products are sold is just wrong because it puts you in this uh, idea that those stuff of natural derived products those products that use again uh, food products that are healthy for you are necessarily going to be healthy for your skin which is simply wrong this is simply not true some of them might be excellent some others are not and again they are based on empty promising. We have no idea about the effect of this extract of pepper. Is it not necessarily bad? Maybe not. I mean, if tomorrow Paula Choice is coming, like a brand like Paula Choice, for example, is coming with those type of extract, I would be more trustworthy simply because the R and D in Paula Choice is very, very there, basically. So I would tends to say, okay, maybe they have done their own study and maybe it uh, did something. When it is Herborian, for me, it's very, very uh, gimmicky, so I would not even bother. But the, the main message here, and this is something that I really dislike, is when uh, the marketing is basically based on emptiness. And here they are surfing on this vibe of natural stuff, unhealthy uh, food stuff for the skin, which are based on emptiness. So, I mean, that's it for today. Tell me down below if you know this brand. Also, what do you think of, uh, about this video? If you want me to do more video uh, like this, of course. Thank you so, so much for your time. If you are new, of course, you know the deal. Subscribe, don't forget the bell. If you did like the video, also don't forget to thumbs up. I have two Instagram accounts, one in French and one in English. Um, what else to tell you? Thank you so, so much for being here. By the way, we have hit the 16 thousand <laughs> subscribers wow thank you so so much to every one of you and i will see you next time au revoir